Hi, this is Dr. Ram from Edmanus. Oh, in this session, we are going to see about intestine histology. Okay, before that, let's get oriented. So, I have represented the GI wall. Here, you can see the four layers of a GI wall. The innermost is a mucosa and outermost is a serosa. In between, we have submucosa and muscularis externa. So, the mucosa is the innermost layer of a GI tract. Here, you can see the epithelium where you can see cells like squamous cells, columnar cells, etc. And then comes the lamina propria and then comes the muscularis mucosa. This marks the boundary of the mucosa. Then the submucosa. Submucosa means beneath the mucosa. The word makes sense, right? And then the muscularis externa where you have circular and longitudinal muscles that helps with the motility of a GI tract. And final layer is a serosa or adventitia. Okay, first let's see important general features of a small intestine before we go different parts of a small intestine. Okay, so this is the small intestine. You can see this is the epithelial and this is the lamina propria. And what is the type of epithelial cell that is present in epithelia? Columnar cells. So this is the columnar cells. Let me zoom this image for you. So you can see the columnar cells here. And the white ones are the goblet cells which helps with mucus secretions. So columnar cells. And number two, this is the most distinguishing feature of a small intestine. The presence of villi and microvilli. They are nothing but finger like evaginations in the mucosa. So, this is your evaginations in the mucosa. This is nothing but villi that helps in absorption. And number two, Crips of Libercune. What is Crips of Libercune? So, this is the base of a villi. Here you can see some invaginations. So, villi is evaginations. And this is invaginations. So, this invagination from the base of villi into the lamina propria is Crips of Libercune. This is important because it has stem cells and panet cells. The stem cells helps in regeneration of the cells and panet cells helps with secretions that protects the GI wall. Now, I am going to take different parts of a small intestine, duodenum, jejunum and ileum. The general features of it is villi, yes, but how to differentiate between these three? You want to look into the submucosa of it. For example, in duodenum, in the submucosa, you can see Brunner glands, and the ileum, you can see Peyer's patches. So, Peyer's patches are nothing but the lymphoid aggregates in lamina propria and the submucosa of the ileum. The lymphoid aggregates, the B and T cells lodge here. Now I'll show you the histology slides. So this is the duodenum. How can we say that? Okay, see, this is your mucosa and this is your submucosa. If you look into the submucosa, you can see glands. This is the most distinct feature of the duodenum, the Brunner's gland that secretes bicarbonate into the lumen of a duodenum and helps to protect the duodenal wall from acids. And the ileum, that is Peyer's patches. So again, this is the mucosa and this is your submucosa and the muscularis externa and the serosa. So, you can see the pairs patches in the submucosa as well as in the lamina propria. Okay, now the large intestine, some important features. How can you tell this is the large intestine? First, there is no villi. This is the most distinct feature of a large intestine. There is no villi. And number two, the crypts of Libercune present with abandoned goblet cells. If you see, this is the Crips of Libercune and you can see abandoned goblet cells here. So, these are all the goblet cells, more in number when compared with small intestine or the stomach. Okay, so what is the take home point? In small intestine, presence of villi. In large intestine, there is no villi. 
and duodenum, you can see Brunner's gland in the submucosa. Ileum, Peyer's patches is present in lamina propria and submucosa. Thank you. See you with more interesting videos. Yeah.